Well, good afternoon. I can see no one up here. Um, uh, thank you very much for the introduction. I just want to say a special thank you to all the organizers of this conference. It has been absolutely exceptional. Yeah. And now you got just me and you're done. Um, ladies and gentlemen, once again, uh, I'm, I find it a privilege to be here to share about a project that's especially close to my heart. We'll start by sharing another thing that's close to our heart, a picture of my five-year-old son. Now, as you can see, Yannick is particularly proud of himself at this point because he has taken my iPhone and after I don't know how many permutations and combinations has figured out my password and uh, went on to take a picture of himself, after which he took another 245 pictures of every square inch of his body and the inside of our toilet. Now, um, after he did this, he, was, uh, he further experimented with uh, drying it off without his father finding out what he had done and, uh, and experimented with the video function of which he grabbed his, I don't know if you have it here in Winnipeg, but the, um, or Manitoba, the Hug -a Bear Express, you know those things where you stuff and, you know, the little cutesy little uh, animals, they could be bears, they could be turtles, they could also be Darth Vader, which is the one that he has. And um, he took a video of Darth Vader with his running commentary threatening to decapitate all of his older sister's uh, Barbie's heads should they not succumb to, uh, to his will. But uh, needless to say, um, this is a picture of, I believe, a fairly typical uh, individual who is entering our education system. He is excited about what he has to learn. He is intensely curious about what's going on. He is willing and actually expecting to make mistakes. And this is what I think is most important. He is and believes intrinsically that solutions do exist. Whether we are talking about global, global issues, global problems, or we're talking about the fact that his father, the next day, tried to take his iPhone and took pictures, but there's no room left because it's all filled with uh, six hours of video of him decapitating his sister's dolls. Um, so whatever it happens to be, he believes intensely that there is a solution. Now, I would like to introduce you to uh, one of my former students, um, a picture taken of Martin Richards, known as Marty, to his friends and to his teachers. The crowning glory of our education system with an average of over 95% in all of his course subjects and eyes thoroughly focused upon the crown jewel of education. The only reason why he and the majority of, of, of students um, in his similar boat uh, learn anything or believe that the learning what they're receiving at school is for, it's not, it's not for real life. No, no, learning uh, to, to Marty and to many other students, unfortunately, this position is purely for the purpose of going to university. Um, unlike Yannick, he has benefited from 12 and a half years of taxpayer support of education. And in the next four months from when this picture was taken, he will be ready to leave the inspiring confines of this, my math, former math classroom, and begin contributing to the betterment of society. Marty, unlike Yannick, is no longer intensely curious. He does not want to make any mistakes. And fundamentally, he does not believe that what he is learning in school has anything to do with the real world and the solutions that are required to make meaningful change there within. And furthermore, he also does not believe that he is part of the solution. Unfortunately, Marty, Marty, wonderful Marty, is not the exception to the rule. Um, the Center for Global Education, which I run, we run about 100 global conferences every year with uh, now we're up to about 25,000 students distributed around the entire world with about 80% focus here within North America. And uh, one of the primary focuses we have in our programming is looking at uh, world issues. World issues, not black and white issues, but issues that need to be addressed. Whether it's deforest action, global warming, biodiversity, reinventing taxation, all those different type of issues, that's what we look for with the students and we bring them together in virtual conferences and online work. And uh, unfortunately, having worked with those students, tens of thousands of them, we know that Marty is not alone. We know that students across North America do not believe that what they are learning will actually help them once they leave the school confines and they do not believe that they at the moment are a part of the real solution. And you know what? Unfortunately, in large part, 
they're right. Right? That what we are teaching them is not equipping them for what the world needs in terms of global citizens. Unfortunately, how can we expect our students to leave to be in the midst of an education, to be inspired to go forward with power and with energy when they come to school and in the days they feel they're learning something, not for the intrinsic joy or not for the fact that it can impact and change the world, but because at the end of the day, they're going to use it to get to university, which they're going to use to get to something else. And then eventually, somewhere down the line, they're going to be able to make a change. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe intrinsically that that is not the case. I think that we are at an, a, an exceptional time, an exceptional time to be an educator. It's an exciting time to be in a world because you know what? Darn it, we got a lot of big issues we got to deal with. There's a lot of things we can solve. And you know what? With technology the way it is now, I believe that we do not need to wait. I'm going to fall off the stage. We do not need to wait until we have our students, uh, after they leave university, after they join the United Nations, we have the technology to bring students around the world together today. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to tell you about one such example of that. If you'll direct your eyes to the screen. Forests of the world are disappearing, fast. Climate change is accelerating. We have a crisis. No climate change deals were achieved at Copenhagen in 2009. The world is in the grip of political paralysis. New solutions are urgently needed. Enter a new army of action agents. Millions of young people across the globe connected through the Microsoft Shout program. Over a million young people decide enough is enough and choose to take matters into their own hands. They embark on a daring mission to stop the destruction of the world's rainforests, keep our planet habitable and save the orangutans. But how will they do this? And I'm going to tell you about that plan. Now, before I get to the plan, though, I want to give you just a little bit of context on where deforest action has come out of. It was said that it was part of the SHOUT initiative. Now, the purpose of the SHOUT initiative is that it invites educators and students to take an active role in global environmental issues, connects them online to experts in the field where they share ideas, collaborate, and they are committed. This is it. We really believe. We got, we got some pretty big fish. Taking a global is the world's largest social network for social, for social good. Microsoft, they're pretty big guys. They've done a thing or two. We really believe that we can bring together the world's youth in schools and through schools and then spread that movement throughout all of society to change the world. And the SHOUT program is one, is, is one way that we plan to do it. Uh, it was all started by, uh, this is Jean-François Richard, who's the vice president, a uh, former vice president of the World Bank, and he wrote a book in 2000 called 20 Issues That Need to Be Addressed in the Next 20 Years. Um, uh, those are the 20 issues that I showed you and that are the inspiration for a lot of the work that the Center for Global Education does. Um, in partnership with the Smithsonian Institute, Microsoft, and Taking a Global, we have come up with a series of projects that are going to be rolled out over the course of three years addressing first land, which is what we're in the midst of right now. We're going to start off with some research where the students go out and they ban trees and they actually come together. They don't just give it an assignment to a teacher who marks it. They take it and they say, oh, thanks a lot. That's great. I'm going to put that in the garbage. I'm done with that sheet anyways. So they actually say, no, we're going to come up with something. We're going to submit it. We're going to participate in some global research that's going through on global institutional intu institutions like the Smithsonian Institute. And our work is going to be valued. And it is valued because the Smithsonian Institute wants that type of information. And then, ladies and gentlemen, is the action project, the deforest action, which is what we're involved in. Our goal is, and we're launching it two weeks from tomorrow, March 3rd for North America, March, uh, March 2nd for North America, March 3rd for Australia, and March 4th for Europe and Africa. We are going to bring together one million youth. One million youth. And we are going to use the curriculum resources that are developed. We're going to be linking them together and in a series of projects. Now, this is uh, the five parts that we're going to do this. And I'm down to five minutes, so I've got to be efficient. Earthwatch. This is wicked. Okay, it's not, not my idea, I'll tell you that. 
But uh, what it is, is we're actually going to be, students are going to have an opportunity using the latest in satellite technology to actually monitor. So we have satellites from Asia and, and, uh, and the US that are part of this. They're going to give us their data so that our students in the midst of their geography lessons can actually monitor what's going on in the forest and can report it. Isn't that cool? Talk about an authentic task, rebuilding a forest. Okay, now I realize, ladies and gentlemen, we're focusing on Borneo. Right? We're focusing on rebuilding the forest in Borneo and Indonesia. We've got forests all over the world we need to rebuild. But what we need to start with those, we need to empower students to see themselves that they are part of something bigger. They are part of something global. And if we're going to make that change, then we need to focus them on this. And so this is what we're doing. We're rebuilding a forest there. Students can go online, deforestaction.com. Your students can do it tomorrow, and they can purchase land. Now, they're actually going to get a certificate. It's going to be emailed to them with a little, the little GPS marking. And they're going to own this land in Indonesia for 99 years. And they can, in turn, monitor this through high-speed link-ups, how the trees are growing in their units, how their trees are growing in the little square meter of land that they purchased for $2. Another one of the projects is called the orangutan. Now, check this out. Is that not the coolest? Orangutans, I had no idea about this, but orangutans are extremely, extremely intelligent and have better memories than humans have. So we'll actually have activities that the students do online playing games with orangutans. A memorization, you know that, that memory game? We're going to lose every single time. An orangutan will beat you. Um, but the students are part of that. So these orangutans that have, then been, uh, that have then been brought out and have been rescued will be put into the sanctuary, which I'm going to tell you about in a second, which is amazing. And then the students, for $5 a day, for $5 can feed and tear for this orangutan for a day, and then they get to interact with it. Good. Okay. The next project, the dome tree. This is incredible. We are going to build the world's largest tree. We're talking 120 meters wide, 70 meters high. That's going to be an orangutan conservatory, right? They're going to set it up in, uh, in, 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 in a, and create a, a healthy atmosphere for the orangutans that are, being, uh, that are being rehabilitated. And it's going to be infused with technology so that students and people, not just, pe not just students, have an opportunity to observe the lifestyles of the orangutan and, great, and, and uh, gain an appreciation for the incredible culture that goes on within these communities. And the last part is the global awareness. Now this is huge. We want students to feel that they are part of something bigger. Ladies and gentlemen, it's, it, you all know this, we can't solve the problems that we have if we continue to see ourselves confined within our classroom or in our cities or where we're looking out for our nation state. We have got to see ourselves as part of a global community. And that's exactly what this is a part of, right? You can see right here, this is a conference that we held with a pilot group in, in the APAC countries. And they actually get to, we get together on a weekly, bi-weekly basis in which the students talk about the different projects that they're doing, meeting virtually with their partners from all over the world, right? They create on here, they post their projects that are going on, and then they create these, these classrooms embedded with blogs and discussion boards and art galleries, this whole cross-curricular match with all these schools around the world that are looking at this common curriculum or clubs or whatever it happens to be in order to make it happen. And then they collaborate and share these ideas asynchronously using this tool, right, which is just posted and they can check out other work and they can climb and they, they do collaborations so they bring together these different schools and then also synchronously through the actual webcast that we host and uh, bring them together with. Ladies and gentlemen, this is our vision for deforest action and I want to emphasize it again. Yes, it is incredibly important that we look at this deforestation on a global scale, right? But, um, and, and that we learn to address it. We have one focus area that we're looking at right now. The most important thing I think we are taking from this is that we are creating global citizens who are going to go out and who are going to see themselves empowered within this world that they live in full of problems that are only going to get addressed. I'm down to 45 seconds. Oh, yeah, deforestaction.com. Go and visit it. You can, uh, if you've got your iPod or whatever, go visit. You can visit it right now. You can sign up. You don't have to be part of a school to do this, right? In fact, if you're 18 to 35, you actually have a chance to go and to live there for five months as part of a competition. You can go and you can live there seriously for five months, and you can be a part of the reclamation project. 
right? Yeah, there's a bunch of quad uh, stuff. You can look into that independently. Ladies and gentlemen, here's my beautiful son, Yannick, and this is uh, some of the favorite story of the both of ours, and it is an interaction between the Queen of Hearts and lovely old Alice from Alice in Wonderland. And Alice says, I one can't believe in impossible things, to which the Queen responds, I dare say, you haven't had much practice. When I was your age, I did it for a half an hour, one each and every single day. Why, sometimes I believe as many as is six impossible things before breakfast. Ladies and gentlemen, what this whole conference is about is, uh, is about things that at one time were considered impossible, but now they are possible. And, and even more importantly, we want the possible to become the ordinary. Thank you for your time.